unless of course you need to take you need accessibility features like if you're in a wheelchair or if you need the bus to kneel down then you can still board through the front but normally it would be 85 cents for people who are senior citizens or have disabilities so if you have a medicare card or if you get the paperwork and get the reduced fare id you can ride for 85 cents or a dollar 75 for adults and exact cash because the buses cannot make change you could also buy a day pass on the bus, which is very useful if you have a lot of stops or if you're going to be using the bus a lot for that day. Transfers are free, so you don't have to pay if you're going from bus to bus on your journey. So there's a 31 day pass you can get, a 10 day, 3 day, and 5 day passes are available too. Normally, you can buy bus passes at the kiosk in downtown Hartford, but because of COVID 19, it's closed. So you can buy your pass either at your local stop and shop or online at cttransit.com. Hello everyone, this is Kevin Arce, self advocate coordinator for DDS. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how it's like to ride the bus and to get to where you need to be independently. So when I was, when I was young and when um, my parents were still taking care of me, they had to take me not just to school, but as I grew older to work, to, to every place I needed to be. And I knew how much of a strain it was on them. So I decided to learn how to take the bus. And through the help of the Kennedy Center, a, a, an organization that helps with, um, with people with disabilities learn how to take the bus, we, I learned how to, how to be more independent. I learned how to take the bus routes. I learned how to rem memorize them. And most of all, I began to give my parents a break. <laughs> so I've talked a little bit about how it was for me to ride the bus and how it was, you know, how to feel to be independent through that. And believe me, when I began riding the bus, not just to work, but to other places such as downtown um, in, in Connecticut or uh, anywhere else, I, uh, I began to save my parents a lot of stress. I mean, don't get me wrong, they love me and I love them. They're good parents. And they, but they can be overprotective. But they also know that I need to learn more independence. One of these days, I'm going to be on my own. And I need to learn how to take care of myself before then. And believing that's a lesson that everyone needs to learn. That we can't rely on, on other people forever. It's okay to, you know, rely on them sometimes, but not all the time. And that's something I learned through riding the bus and learning how to, you know, just find my own transportation. So now that we're in the bus, there are certain things that we should and should not do. The very first thing that we should do is pay for the bus fare or, you know, the bus ride. Um, and there are many, many rules and many um, regulations that we need to follow once we're, you know, riding on the bus. For starters, we cannot make, you know, noises like, you know, from our phones or cell phones. If we do want to hear music, we got to do it with, with our headphones. And um, if there are people with disabilities or the elderly who don't have a seat, make sure you either make room for them if there's room in, in your space. And if there isn't, give them your seat. Because it's not just polite, it's the right thing to do. So one of the uh, newer bus passes that you can use is the Go CT card. And it's very similar to the Metro card in New York City. So all you would do is put your money on the card and the money on the card never expires. So you don't need to buy a different pass every single month. And you, can, you don't have to worry about having cash. It'll, and it will adjust to every bus ride. And there'll be a video in a minute that will show more about the go ct card but it's really convenient so i haven't been on the bus since this covid thing took off i started working from home in march but i still have 19 dollars on my go ct card which is great it never expires so that when i do eventually start using the bus i still have that money if i had to say a 30-day pass i would have lost the money on my pass because it would expire after that month but because i have the go ct card i don't have to worry about that Why is it doing? <laughs> In 
Introducing the Go CT card for CT Transit and CT Fast Track. The simplest way to get the lowest fare every time you ride. All it takes is a tap on the card reader when you board a bus. In addition to existing payment options, the Go CT card is a new option that automatically calculates the discounts you're eligible to receive. It uses a new system called fare capping that's based on how often you ride. For example, if you ride five days in a row using the Go CT card, you'll earn the five day fare discount. There's no second guessing which pass to buy. The Go CT card provides the flexibility of cash and coins with the benefits of a long-term pass. There's no risk of your money going unused because the card and the funds on it never expire. So you only pay for the rides you take. Go CT cards can be purchased at CT Transit sales outlets, participating retailers, or online at GoCTCard.com. Whether you ride every day or a few times a year, the GoCT card can guarantee you'll always pay the lowest possible fare. To learn more, visit GoCTCard.com. And if you need a GoCT card with a disability rate, you have to go on the website on CTTransit.com and there'll be a form that you fill out to get the reduced fare ID and they'll send you a special GoCT card. Or you can now use your smartphone as your bus pass. They have an app that's called the GoCT card app and you can download it for free on the app store for the iPhone or Play Store on Android. And it's free, very simple to use and you don't have to remember to have a bus card with you. But all you have to do is press, let me see if I can move this. Yep, this, this is what it looks like. This is my current screen. It'll show you what your balance is and you press the purple button that says tap. It will give you a QR code that you would tap when you get on the bus. And it's as easy as that. You don't have to remember to bring a pass with you. You always have it with you. And this is only for buses, not for trains. Now, if you're a college student, you can get a free bus pass through your school. It's called the U-Pass. And the cost of the program is already included in your student fees. So all you need is your valid U-Pass CT card and your student ID and you're on your way. And it's free. And you can use this card for buses and trains. So these are some of the schools that participate in the U-Pass program. So all the community colleges, UConn, CCSU, Southern, any of these colleges participate in the program. So all you have to do is ask about it at your school and you'll get a card you'll be able to use to ride buses and trains for free for the semester. It's really useful. I had one when I went to Capitol. It was really helpful. And these are some of the transit systems that participate in the UPASS program. So it's not just CT Transit. It's Milford, Magic Carpet, CT Rail, New Haven Line, Shoreline East, except for Amtrak, Middletown, Wyndham, Bridgeport, so lots of other cities. So this is what a bus stop looks like. And they're, loc they're located every few blocks. So in order to get on a bus, you would need to go to a stop. So you go to one of these stops, you have to be there at least five minutes before your bus is scheduled to get there because sometimes buses get there early and you want to get on that bus. You don't want to be waving at it as it drives away from you. And there's a wonderful new app that will show you exactly where your bus is and when it will be there. So you don't even have to worry about if you missed it or if there's a long wait. So this is what the bus stop sign looks like. It's this blue and white sign. Sometimes there'll be a bus shelter you can wait in, which is always nice if it's raining. But most of the time it's these signs and then on the side of the road. And you wanna make sure you're, you stand where they can see you. And sometimes you might wanna wave just to get the driver's attention. And it will say in the bottom routes, what routes stop at that? bus stop and then there's this number 5259181 that's your number one go-to place for bus information besides the internet that's the Hartford area customer service line 
and you could talk to someone that will help you. This is the transit app that I was talking about. It's another free app that's available on the App Store and on the Play Store. And it'll show you, you can track the location of buses in real time. It'll show you exactly where the bus is and or the train and when it will get there. And it's free. So this is what it looks like. And this is, again, my screen, what it looks like. It'll show you where you are. So you can put in where to, you can put in your destination. So I want to go to Stop and Shop. I want to go to the mall. You can put that in and it'll give you directions. And you can actually save. If you go to the same place a lot, you can save that address. And it'll show you how long it will take you to get there and what buses. So my work was saved, it's saved in my app so that I can get directions. And it says here 76 minutes because it was COVID and a lot of the buses were running. No, I think it was a Sunday. It'll show you and see the these little button lines after the, the minutes. It means that it's live. That you can track the bus live. So you don't have to wait in the cold for very long or the heat or at night by yourself because you can use this app to see where your bus is. And you can know, oh, the bus is running late, so I don't have to be out there. But I would still, I don't trust the app 100%. I still give extra time, and I still go out. I'm there when it, the bus is supposed to get there, because computers make mistakes. And like I said, you, you don't want to be waving at that bus as it drives by you. You want to be on the bus, get into where you need to go. Hi, my name is Varian Salter, Self-Advocate Coordinator in the North Region in the Willimantic office. And today we are talking about how to take a bus. In order to take the bus, you got to go to buy your ticket or pay your fare. You go to the fare box to buy your ticket and pay the fare. And the fare box he's using in the picture is for a CT Fast Track bus. It's a little bit different. This is the CT Transit. This is the fare box, and I'm going to talk about how to use it. You scan your Go CT Pass card or phone in the orange part. In the black part up above, you scan the pass here. If you are going to transfer, you press the green button if you will be switching to another bus. And in, in the part that's um, at the bottom next to the orange, you insert your cash or coins there. Now, again, if you're riding a regular CT Transit bus right now, they're asking that everyone boards through the back, so you won't need to worry about this. You'll only have to worry about paying a fare if you're riding the fast track, which we're going to be talking about. And the fast track is Connecticut's first rapid transit system. And it's a system of bus routes that use a special bus only roadway for all or part of the trip. And it's really nice because you can get to downtown without having to sit in traffic. It only takes a route. I mean, getting from West Hartford to Hartford on the bus to fast track usually takes 25 minutes with a regular bus, but with fast track, I can get there in about 10 minutes because there's no other traffic besides buses. This is a little video about fast track. Welcome to CT Fast Track, Connecticut's modern bus rapid transit system designed to transform the way we travel in central Connecticut. The CT Fast Track system is built around a traffic free bus only roadway between Hartford and New Britain with 10 stations along the way and a number of stops downtown, including major attractions and offices. There are a few kinds of CT Fast Track bus routes that you can use. Shuttles from Bristol and New Britain to Hartford, local routes which travel on the bus only roadway for part of their trip, and then continue on local streets to destinations like CCSU, Yukon Health, West Farms Mall, and Manchester Community College, Circulator routes, which provide linkages from stations to other destinations like St. Francis and Hartford Hospitals, West Hartford Center, and Capaco Shopping Center. Express bus routes, which run express on the bus-only roadway, extending the system's reach to Bristol, Cheshire, Southington, and Waterbury. Are you ready to ride? 
Get on board at ctfasttrack.com. And it's really convenient. And sometimes you can even get discounts for certain, say you want to go to a Yukon game or a Yardless game. If you show them your bus ticket, sometimes they do discounts. It's a lot easier to use the fast track to get to games instead of having to find parking in downtown Hartford. And fast, the fast track stops right at the Excel Center for events there. And then it's a five minute walk from the downtown Hartford fast track stop at the Excel Center to Yard Goat, to Yard Goat Stadium. So it's really quite convenient. This is local service on the fast track, all the stops. So it starts in downtown Hartford and it goes to downtown New Britain. And then this is the regional service. So it'll take you to West Hartford, to the mall, to Bristol, Waterbury, Cheshire, New Britain. So it's really quite convenient. So these are some more, more information on Fast Track. It's very accessible. So the machine on Fast Ticket Machine is a little bit different. So instead of buying your ticket or paying for your fare on the bus on Fast Track, you use a machine to buy your ticket so that it eliminates having to wait in line. And make sure you do have your ticket or your bus pass handy because they have people that check to make sure that you paid. And you want to make sure you have that ticket in your hand so you can show the inspector. And you can plan your trip on the app, on the transit app, or on their website. And you can also use your GoCT card. They have readers that you can use that are right in the station. Let me see if I can get the video. Can everybody see the video screen? Okay, perfect. And I know with teams it's different. For riders in Central Connecticut, the Go CT card adds speed and convenience to the CT Fast Track experience. Instead of choosing a pass and sorry. For riders in Central Connecticut, the Go CT card adds speed and convenience to the CT Fast Track experience. Instead of choosing a pass and paying with cash, oh, coins, or a card, you now have the option to simply tap oh, on. When you arrive at a CT Fast Track station or a stop in the downtown Hartford. Oh, it's just on the presentation. Okay, on the slide. So these are just some videos. The CT Fast Track is very accessible. They have it, the bus was wheelchair accessible, of course, and they'll tell you, they'll name the station on the loudspeaker when you get there, so you don't have to worry about not knowing where you are. But still, I want to warn you, do not fall asleep on the bus or the train, because you'll miss your stop and it'll be very aggravating. It's happened to me before, it's not fun. Luckily, I only missed it by one, but I saw one time a guy fell asleep on the bus and he ended up all the way at the end of the line. And he had to go all the way back to downtown Hartford because he missed a stop. So try to stay awake and even if you're listening to your music, try to be aware of where you are. So the Hartford line, that's our newest transport, newest addition to our transportation family here in Greater Hartford. It's a bus, not a bus, a train line that will take you from Hartford to New Haven or from Hartford to New Haven and then to Springfield. And you can use your U-Pass with that. <laughs>
again, that they also have a discount for people with disabilities. And a lot of people don't know this, that if you're traveling with a support staff, your staff could ride for free when they're with you. And they mentioned you use your ticket machine in the train station to buy your ticket. You can buy your ticket on board, but it's cheaper to use the machine. So it costs a lot more money to buy it from the, the ticket from the conductor. So if you're going to New York City, you can purchase both your Hartford Line and Metro North tickets at the same time from the machine. You just have to select Grand Central Terminal as your final location. And they do, the Hartford Line does share trains with Amtrak. So you want to make sure that you have the right ticket and you can use it on that Amtrak. And you should have no problem. Check your train schedule before your trip so that you know what train to take in order to connect. Because the last thing you want is to be stranded because you missed the last train. And you could be, and it's not fun. We had to wait around an hour last time because I misread the schedule. And my mom and I had to wait an hour in New Haven to get the train to Hartford. And the train to Hartford does stop running relatively early. So you wanna make sure that you're in New Haven Union Station on time so that you're not stuck or having to spend a lot of money to take an Uber or a Lyft back home. And the ride on Am, not Amtrak, and the ride on Metro North to and from New to New York is still about two hours. So you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough time. And if trains are overcrowded, you might have a longer wait. Amtrak, sometimes will only let people onto the trains that have their Amtrak tickets. So if you have a, a med, if you have a Hartford Line ticket, they might not let you on. So you might have, a, you'll have to wait for a Hartford Line train. And if you're traveling late at night or on your own, it's a lot safer to wait at a bigger station that has more people and police and is well lit. It's just a safety thing. Plus it's not pleasant sometimes to be all alone in a station is not the safest thing. Make sure your ride is waiting for you at the station to el eliminate having to be in the train station by yourself late at night. Metro North is a commuter rail line and it's through New York, the MTA. And it runs from several stations on the shoreline to Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Yes, that's the official name, Grand Central Terminal. I know a lot of people say Grand Central Station, but it's Grand Central Terminal. Right now, the ridership is very low because of COVID, but they are taking precautions. They're cleaning the trains very well. And it's gonna, we're gonna get back to normal soon. But for the Metro North, you gotta remember that if you're not, you don't have to be somewhere early in the morning in the city. It's best to ride the off-peak trains. And that's any train after about 9.30 in the morning and then after 6 p.m. at night. Because you'll be paying more money for peak trains and it'll be more crowded because people are getting to and from work. So you want to avoid that if, and stay off of not only Metro North, but stay off the subway during rush hour because it's crowded. People are trying to get to work and it's not fun for tourists. So my child wants to use public transportation, now what? It's perfectly normal for parents to be nervous about letting their child ride public transit independently. I know that my mom was very nervous when she let me go to New York on my own for a concert late at night at Radio City. So I took the bus by myself to New York and then I took the train, the subway, to Brooklyn from Manhattan after the concert to stay at my cousin's house. And she was nervous, but she knew she had to let me go in order to try my wings. And I had my phone with me the whole time so she could be in contact with me and know that I'm okay. And that's important. Make sure your child has a fully charged cell phone with them when they're out on their own so that they can call for help if they need to. And you can use an app like Find My Friends for iPhone or Life360, which works on both the iPhone and the Android. And if you have the app and your child has their app on their phone, you can follow their trip and you can know where they are at all times and know that they made it safely. 
And this is also super helpful in the event they get lost or if you're nervous about, oh, is he gonna miss the train? You could see, oh, it's six o'clock, he's at the train station, everything's okay. And it eliminates having to call all the time. Because you want your child to think that mom and dad believe in them. And you want them to have their independence. And it's a new experience for both of you. Oh, go over what they need to know, need to do if they get lost or feel uncomfortable. So if your child works with a behaviorist, ABA, you might want to use a social story. That's helpful. And the best person to ask if you're lost or you feel uncomfortable on the bus or the train is the conductor or the driver. And also for the train, another little safety tip, if you're riding the train late at night or the New York City subway, ride in the conductor's car. And that's the car with the conductors in it, so you're never all, all alone. And if it's rush hour and a subway car or a train car is empty, there's a reason for it. So that's not a, a car that you want to go into. And it's a new experience for you both. And it, it will be uncomfortable, it will be anxiety provoking, but the more that you do it, the more comfortable you feel. And think how great it will be when you don't need to be constantly giving rides to your child. You don't have to say, mom, can I have a ride to the mall? Mom, can I have a ride to, to practice? Mom, can I have a ride to the game? They can get on a bus and go by themselves. And there is training programs. We're gonna go over transit training in a minute. There's also Uber and Lyft. Now that's a little the safe. It's a little less safe than a bus or a train because you're in a car with a stranger. But there are some safety tips that we're going to talk about. So for Uber and Lyft, all you need to do is download the apps to your phone. They're free on the Android and the Google Play Store. And then it'll show you. You put in where you need to go, where your destination is, and You'll get a driver. And there's a video, the video links here about how to use Uber and Lyft. And make sure that you check the price before you agree to anything because they both do surge pricing, which means when there's a lot of people using the service at the same time. So for New Year's Eve or if there's a game letting out and a lot of people are using Uber and Lyft at the same time, it'll be more expensive. So it's a good idea to have both of the apps so that you can choose which one is the cheapest. And if you have a friend or family member who has Uber and Lyft, they have, dis they have a discount code they can give you if you've never used it before. So you might be able to ride for free a couple times. But like I said, there are some safety things. We're gonna go over in the next slide. So just remember Sammy. And Sammy is Samantha Josephson. She was a young woman who was murdered because she got into a car thinking it was a, her Uber, but it really it was somebody who was not good. So her parents started this foundation to teach people how to be safe on riding Ubers and Lyfts. So the first letter is stop, plan ahead. Before you request a ride, think about where you're headed, review the safety features in the app so that you know how to use them. So all the apps have a safety feature so you can send your ride, share your ride with a family member or a friend so that they can follow along and make sure that you got there safely. There's also a feature that will let you call the police if you feel uncomfortable. The next letter, ask. Ask your driver, what's my name, to confirm they have booked a trip with you through the ride sharing app. Then M, match. Match the make, model, and license plate of the car with the one displayed in the app. And you really want to make sure you do this carefully to make sure that you're in the right car. And then I is inform. So share the details of your trip with a family member or friend. And you can utilize the share trip function in your ride sharing app. And it's really important because you're in a car with a stranger. So you want to be safe. Another thing is if you're going to ride an Uber or Lyft late at night, it's a lot safer to ride with a friend then ride by yourself. Because it's late at night, you don't want to be in a car with a stranger by yourself. And especially if it's a young woman, it's a lot safer to ride with a friend. I always ride with my friends when I'm riding late at night. And plus it's cheaper to share it, the cost of the Uber with other people. Yeah. 
if you want to get your driver's license, you can go to a driving school. I went to get my license in my mid-20s. I went to a driving school called Utah Drive School in Willimantic, Connecticut. Um, we paid out of my DDS budget for it. And I went to the place to, to practice for my test on the computer. And they were very nice. And the teacher took me out on the road. And he was very nice. And he taught me how to drive. And then when he thought I was ready, I went to go and get my driver's test. And I passed the first time. Some people might not be able to pass the first time. But I encourage you to be assertive and persistent and to try and try again. Um, this is the next street driving school. They have a program that helps people with disabilities learn how to drive. So I encourage you to cl click on the link and look at next street. And also here's the video about driving with a disability. Please check it out. My friend Andrew Arbo is the driving expert. He does a wonderful presentation. But the next street driving school is a wonderful program. Andrew is actually working with them on developing their program. And the first step that you would take with Next Street is evaluation, where you would just go in and they, had, they test you in office to see your reaction times, your eyesight, stuff like that. And if you pass all of the in office stuff, they have you go behind the wheel and they can check that you're ready to be a safe driver. And if you're ready to be a safe driver, you go on to to driving lessons and to get your permit. And if you're not ready, they'll give you a list of recommendations about what you can do to get ready to drive. And like my friend Varian just said, you can pay for it. You can use their DDS funding or if you get services from DSS Autism Division, you can use that funding to pay for the evaluation and some of the lessons. It's really important to work with the instructor that it has experience working with people with learning disabilities and just keep practicing. The transit option. Dial Ride oh. is another um, great service in your town. Um, you can call a week before, schedule your dial ride and schedule time, and they come to pick you up at your front door. Also, non emergency medical transportation is a good way to get to your doctor's appointments. These are some other transportation options for people with disabilities. There's also transit training, which is a wonderful option to learn how to use public transportation, and that's through the Kennedy Center. And what they'll do is they'll have you ride the bus with the trainer who will teach you how to use transportation. And that trainer will be with you as long as you need until you get comfortable riding bus transportation. And there's a little video here that will tell you more about the training. But you can use your DDS funding. Let me see if I can get it. Can everybody see the YouTube screen? Perfect. Oh, here it is. I'm just going to make the screen a little bigger. Oh, why did it do that? time to move to my current address, I really thought about 
what town, what location within that town can I live in to make sure that I have the best access to public transit while living in a community that meets my needs? I'm learning how to be independent by myself. I'm learning how to take the bus by myself without anybody coming on a bus with me. I'm learning how to just be active. I gave up driving 2000. It's uh, my opinion. I'm not the greatest driver. You know, it's uh, hurt myself is one thing, but hurt other somebody else. That's that's what's making me nervous. You know, and uh, the best way to do it just stop driving. The life that I live now is a little bit different from the life I used to live. You know, I miss walking, but I still try and do the best I can do in the chair. I go out to the to the stores, to the mall to the grocery store, I catch the bus a lot, you know, which is convenient. The bus is a great tool. Connecticut Transit currently operates over 30 local bus routes in the Hartford area alone, with services extending to Middletown, Enfield, New Britain, Bristol, as well as West Farms and Buckland Hills malls. Many routes operate seven days a week, with services beginning as early as 5 a.m. and continuing well past midnight. Seniors and people with disabilities can travel at half the cost of the regular fare, and transfers are free. The Kennedy Center is available to provide one-on-one -on -one instruction to people with disabilities and seniors to make them more comfortable and independent using public transportation. And we provide that service throughout the state of Connecticut. So anywhere where there is bus service or train service, we're available to work with people to help them make the most of those services. And once we're finished with our instruction, they're able to use those services independently. Daryl Brown is a senior mobility trainer for the Kennedy Center. He's the Hartford representative covering the greater Hartford area. People like train, uh, usually um, people who are, has disabilities, elderly people who lost their driving privileges. Daryl's job as senior mobility trainer allows him the opportunity to meet with a candidate for travel training and assess their abilities to ride the transit system independently. And after the assessment, I set up a travel training with the individual and to see where they are at, teach them how to read the bus schedule. And what most people find is that if, let's say, their work beer is getting lost in the bus system, if we create that experience and they see how to resolve it and that there, is, there will be a way to get home um, and that they can problem solve a situation like that, they're usually much more comfortable um, once they're on their own when they see there is a way to deal with that. Also, if, if something is just so unfamiliar, if you've never been on the transit system before, it's natural to be afraid of it. Um, so really, the, the trainer is there to ease that anxiety and to show you how to interpret the maps and schedules, to show you that there is a customer service number you can call if you ever have a problem, and someone will be there to answer your questions. Daryl had the fortunate opportunity to work with Peter Karanja from Kenya. At age 15, Peter became paralyzed from the waist down from complications from a surgery and was left stranded in his village for most of his early adult life. His brother, a pastor at a local church in Bloomfield who had moved to the U.S. soon after, eventually sponsored Peter to come to Connecticut. I, I imagine that my life could be more easier, life could be more easier than rather than where I was. I, I figured out it could be more easier for me to do things get a job, go to school, and to be independent, because what I was looking for most is to be independent. The paratransit system provides an alternative door-to-door -door service in circumstances where a particular disability prevents someone from using the bus. Anywhere within three quarters of a mile of a bus stop within the greater Hartford area, we actually pick up passengers at their residence. We provide a door-to-door -door service, uh, that will allow us to pick that person up from either their home or any location and transport them anywhere within the Greater Hartford area. Paratransit, you have to prearrange your ride. And so if you want to leave earlier or stay a little longer at your destination, you don't have that choice. You have to be ready when the, the van comes. A person that would utilize the service, the ADA service, uh, would be, you know, for example, someone who is not very close to a bus stop. Uh, they may be at that three quarter of a mile location. So our, our service provides them the opportunity to be picked up and transported in any direction that they'd like to go. 
mobility features are present in both paratransit vehicles and our buses. The greatest accessibility feature on the bus is the driver um, because they're really there um, to help people out. All drivers uh, in, on the public transit system, no matter where you are in the state, uh, get sensitivity training on how to work with people with disabilities. They get training on how to help a person who uses a mobility device board the vehicle, how to secure that device on the, on the vehicle. If you have any problems, they'll help you. If you can't get yourself on the bus, they'll help you on the bus. All the buses in Connecticut now have either a ramp or a lift to allow an individual who uses a mobility device to board. So there's just a very simple ramp that folds out. The ramp is great. You know, that's how I get on the bus. Benjamin Coleman Sr. was born and raised in Hartford. He's happily married and has 10 children. So I don't usually share the whole thing because it's long, but it's a really good thing to have, to have that training. So transportation manners, it's very important to have good manners when using public transportation, unless you want everybody on the bus or the train to be annoyed with you or the plane. So all of your seats, if someone with a disability comes on, someone who's elderly or a pregnant lady, offer your seat. It's the right thing to do. More likes for quieter rides. So use headphones when you're listening to your music. You might love the sound of your music, but the rest of the people on the bus or the train or the plane might not. And also your cell phone. It's a bus or a train or a plane. It's not a phone booth. So if you wanna have a conversation, keep it quiet. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been on a bus and someone's on their phone so loud that I can hear all of their business. So you want to keep it quiet or the best thing to do is just to text until you get off that bus. Move in to fit in. So move over, let other people on the bus. So sometimes it does get crowded. So you want to move back and let other people in. Put your bags down under between your feet, not on the seat next to you. The seats are there for people, not for your bags. And give way, let people on the bus, let people get off the bus, I mean, before you get on. It's just a polite thing to do. Also, some things to think about, leave your personal hygiene for home and don't eat gross food on the bus. So again, don't eat that garlic sandwich on the bus because we all have to smell it. So COVID-19 has drastically changed things. And now in Connecticut, at least, we've got a good grip on our cases. So people are starting to go on the bus again and train. So there's some things you wanna do to be safe. The most important thing you can do is cover your nose and mouth before getting on the bus, the train, or the Uber. And that means wear a mask. And like our governor says, if you have to ask, wear a mask. Use public transport only if you really need to. Otherwise, save it for essential workers, like grocery store workers and doctors, nurses, hospital workers that need to get to work. Although right now you can start to use the bus for fun stuff, but just be aware. Practice social distancing on the bus and at the bus stop or station. So keep six feet between you and other people. This might mean sitting in the back of the bus and keeping a, and keeping a few seats between you and other people. Or if you're on an Uber or Lyft, sit in the back seat of the car and open a window and a ride share to maintain social distancing. And remember to board the bus through the rear door unless you have a mobility aid, like a cane or a walker or you're in a wheelchair and they're not charging any fares right now. And of course, wash your hands or use hand sanitizer after riding public transit. If you're sick, stay home. I can't emphasize this enough. You'd be surprised how many people don't follow that rule. I've been sitting next to people on buses, they're coughing and sneezing. It's like, 
dude, you're disgusting. You need to stay home if you're sick because you're not doing anyone any favors. Remember, even if you're not feeling well and you go on the bus, like, oh, I'm young and healthy. I'm not going to get sick. But you might bring those germs home to grandma and grandpa and they can get really sick. They could even die. But just remember that you have to be safe. And they are doing a lot right now to keep you safe on public transportation. So they're doing extra cleaning. They're using UVs. But you have to do your part too. And things are going to get back to normal. We're going to be going on planes and trains again. So stay safe and happy travels. And thank you for watching our presentation. And any questions? Thank you, Yana. That was really good. <laughs> Some very good information. I actually, I learned a couple of things. I didn't know about the go, the go, go CT. Then get pass. Yeah, go CT. Last time I looked into bus transit, we were still using just passes so <laughs> um, and it was hard to figure out which one to get because he wasn't riding the bus every day so that, that was some good information thank you very much we're um, also developing a new pass that you can they are working on something where you can you could be able to use it on buses and trains eventually the hope is they'll have a pass that would be great i mean that that would make it so much easier and like you said on the phone i know um when we were in San Francisco, we had it, passes on our phones and you just, you know, scanned it when you got on the bu uh, bus and you didn't have to worry about having a separate pass or anything like that. So that's really good. Um, does anyone have any questions? You can uh, either send it in a chat or you can unmute yourself and ask a question if you have a question. Um, I, I can, I'm going to unmute everybody now and then so everyone has the ability to unmute themselves now, I believe. If you don't wave <laughs> or send me a chat and I will let you know. Does anyone else have any questions for Yana? Uh, I got I a quick question or comment, I guess. This is Tom. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a disability advocate and also a parent. Um, and my son's a little young yet to be driving, riding the bus, but you know, the plan is to get there before too long. So I appreciate this presentation. It was great. Uh, you know, there were, there were a number of things that I knew already, but there's quite a bit that I learned new. So I, I really appreciate some of this. Um, the transit training, I was never aware of that through the Kennedy Center. So that's, that's really, really huge. That, that's really uh, kind of cool. And, and again, just as a disability advocate, it's, it's important for me to know this stuff to share with others, you know, and, you know, I have a number of people that I've worked with over the last year or so who are not aware of, of that, I don't think. <laughs> so I think that's that's really big. They're they're asking, you know, even their DDS staff to do the training with them. You know, they sometimes use that that staff, which is which is one thing. But so um, so anyway, so that was great. So I appreciate knowing that. Um, and I guess the the one thing I would ask, and maybe this is to Pat. I don't know about Yana, but is this presentation something that could be provided to others? In um, you know, I, I'm just thinking of some of the transition programs that that are around the area. You know, even in my town, I, I can imagine some of the transition students who are in that 18 to 21 range who are looking for that independence in the near future uh, would really benefit from this presentation, I think. I'd be happy to do it. And actually the transition program in my town, I don't know how it is in your town, but here in West Hartford, they actually use the bus with their students. I've seen them take the bus to their job sites. Yeah, they do, this, they do the same thing in my oh. hometown, I'm in Rocky Hill, but, but also I think there's, there's probably quite a bit in here that the uh, people in the transition program the teachers and, and might not know because <laughs> there's quite a bit of good information here. So I think you could teach the students, but also teach some of the, some of the educators as well. So. And so someone, well, Claire asked if there a minimum age, the child needs to be to ride the bus. And I'm assuming you mean independently. Uh, I would say just see their maturity. Hmm. Based, it's based on maturity. I started taking the bus on my own to downtown Hartford when I was about 15. Okay. I was because I was in a cl in a club in school. We had, and I was on their leadership network, and we had meetings in downtown Hartford, and it was getting annoying for my parents to have to drive into Hartford during rush hour. Now, does that U pass that U pass you mentioned is that for you mentioned all the colleges that that participate? Is that for uh, high school students as well, or some of the high? I know my high school did provide a pass. You have to ask. Okay. And so then BRS, when someone's getting a job with BRS, they will provide a pass at least for the first month cool thank you so much any other questions um i can i can vouch for the kennedy center my son used the kennedy center training he learned how to take the bus 
from Glastonbury High School because we don't live anywhere near a bus stop, so we would have to take him to the high school. But he would go from the high school or whatever, uh, if he was close to downtown, um, he went from Chili's a few times too, because he was near downtown Glastonbury, um, to Manchester Community College. And that was a specific ride. He had to change buses. Um, and actually it was Daryl who was in the video that did his training. So it was nice to see Daryl again. Um, and, it, and he learned that and they were great. I mean, Daryl rode with him a few times. He taught him about etiquette on the bus. Um, like you said, not listening to your music out loud, not looking at people or staring at people. Um, my son does tend to talk to himself quite, quite out loud, quite loudly. So he had to kind of make sure he was um, getting that a little bit under control while I was on the bus so he didn't bother or scare other people because um, he's also a big guy. And, um, and he, he did that for two semesters, I think. He, he took the bus and, and he was very happy to have that independence. He didn't like the bus ride as much because it was so long because he had to switch buses. Um, it would have been a lot faster for us to drive him but that learning that, that bus route was a great independent, great for his independence. He also um, took ADA transit because he had to, sometimes he was going out to West Hartford at night and the buses didn't run through Glastonbury then. So he ended up taking ADA transit where again, we were not close to a bus stop. So we would take him down to Glastonbury High School, drop him off there. He would meet the ADA transit, take it into West Hartford. He was um, going out to, uh, um, he had a couple groups. He did Best Buddies and another group, um, Unified Theater, out at the University of Hartford. So he would take the bus there and they would pick him up and bring him back to, to GHS and we'd pick him up there. Again, great independence for him. And a um, couple times when he missed it, or he missed his bus because the ADA, that's the paratransit or ADA transit, you have to schedule it. He missed the schedule. He ended up coming back on Uber. So. Yeah, that's expensive. That can cost. It can get very expensive. Yeah, but that was, I mean, that his, his choice was he could take an Uber or he could wait for us to get out to West Hartford to get him, which would have taken an hour at that time of day. It was a Friday night um, in the evening during rush hour. So by the time I got there to get him, it was cheaper for him to take Uber and come home. But he made that decision and he did it. And he, he rode Uber a lot. Um, and for again, he's a big guy, so I wasn't too worried about him on Uber. Um, I know my daughter won't take an Uber by herself, and she's an adult, a young adult, um, and some of her friends are the same way. They'll go together, but they won't take an Uber by themselves. So some of the safety issues you do have to be aware of. Um, unfortunately, sometimes more for women than for men, but any other questions? Claire, did we by answer the, your question? Uh, by we'll... the way, next year, this year, unfortunately, there's no biggie, but next year, they'll have, on the weekends, they have a bus that you can pick up in Springfield that will take you to the fairgrounds. So you could take the train from Hartford or New Haven to Springfield, and there's a bus, that, the shuttle bus that you could take right to the fairgrounds so you don't have to worry about parking or anything. I think that was a great presentation, Yana. I'm very impressed. I hadn't seen that before. And I agree with Tom. I think you should be giving that to a lot of the transition programs. Well, it's my hope that once this coronavirus thing blows over, maybe we can do a program called the Amazing Journey, where we split with, with students, we split them into different groups, and each group takes a different transportation mode, and they all meet in a central location. Sounds like a documentary. <laughs> All right, th thank you guys. I, I got to get running for some child care activity over here. So okay, thank you very Tom. much. I, I appreciate it. Bye. -bye. Uh, Any, other good questions? One. Any other questions? Pat, she does have a presentation on voting. I don't know if that's something that you're interested in for possibly next month at some point. Yeah, she's doing that. She, don't you have a lot of people coming in? Yeah, to I have a group tomorrow. I know James comes to my group. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't been since he's been, has he been coming since he's been down at uh, Chapel Hill? I haven't Hill? seen him, but we're virtual now, so he doesn't have to come to West Hartford anymore. Yeah. Well, he actually, actually, while he was home, I had him uh, send out an absentee ballot because he's going to be in New Haven for voting. So he sent in his absentee ballots for absentee ballot for both. 
the um, uh, the election for the election and for the primary. Oh, good. Um, so yeah, he's he's been voting since he was eighteen, so he knows how to vote. But um, but yeah, no, I saw you have like forty five people signed up for that tomorrow. Yep, it's really important, and we really want to try to get people to vote. And yeah, that's amazing. By the way, there's a petition going around right now to get the governor to allow people with disabilities to have an absentee ballot, or anyone that really doesn't feel comfortable voting at the, in person in November to have access well, to an absentee ballot. They're doing that this year. They're going to be sending out um, absentee ballot applications to everyone. That's um, just for the primary. Right now, it's only oh. for the Oh, I thought it was for both. I'm sorry. No, nope. you kind of have to sign. You have to. There's a little petition going around to make sure that it is by the time, in effect, by the time they do the presidential election. I didn't realize it was just for the primary initially. Yeah. I thought it was for both. Okay. Well, I thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation, and I don't think we have any other questions. You covered a lot. I thought it was really good. Um, right. And thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.